Hi, my name is Wyatt Groth and welcome back to the Hammersmith DIY channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about swageless wire balustrade fittings. So what we have here are some swageless wire balustrade fittings. So what does that actually mean? Well, probably the easiest way to explain that is to actually show you the opposite. So swaged fittings. And I've got one here that I've prepared earlier that uh, we've done. And if you have a look up here in the close-up shot, you'll see that this particular fitting uh, has the wire going into the end of it, and then the fitting is crimped there using uh, what is a hydraulic swager. And uh, I, in another video, um, which, we've, which we've shown on how to use this particular tool, if you click on the banner in the top uh, corner there, you'll be able to see um, that particular video and how to do this. So this particular fitting here is a, a hydraulically swaged fitting. And it's quite a nice, quite a nice, neat look. And in terms of producing a fitting like this uh, for wire balustrading, this is definitely uh, the best way of doing it. But to do this, you need to have a tool and you need to be able to purchase this tool. And if you only have a few fittings that you're needing to do, then you've obviously got to take into consideration the cost of the tool and hence uh, whether it's beneficial if you only had say half a dozen half a dozen pieces of wire that you wanted to do maybe it was a bit of uh, trellis work or you know for vines to go up or something like that uh, the cost of buying a tool uh, could prove a bit expensive so in this type of scenario what we actually have as another option is what we call a swageless fitting and swageless meaning you don't need a tool this is the fitting here. So there are two parts to it. Uh, one is the, the bottle screw section, which you see here. So this part in the middle here, this is the bit that twists. And when as you turn this fitting, so if I just unwind this fitting like so, as you turn this fitting in the middle, it brings this part of the fitting closer together, which creates the tension on the wire cable that you're looking to achieve. So the way these fittings actually work is quite simple, and I'm gonna give you some close-up shots so you can see what's going on here. If you take a close-up look with this particular fitting, you'll see what we've got here is a, uh, some jaws that are inside this fitting that as you twist this particular part, starts closing these jaws. And the idea being, you have this wire cable. So this particular cable here is 3.2 millimeters in diameter and it's a one by 19 configuration. We also sell a seven by seven configuration, but the one by 19 I've always felt is a better setup for this wire. One, it's a smoother wire, it just looks a bit nicer. So let's see how it actually works here. It's very simple. All you do is unscrew this part, um, basically as far as it'll go without it falling off. And then literally, if you see here, you literally just push the bit of wire in like so. And then all you have to start doing is turning this bit like so until it starts gripping onto the wire. And then on the other end, so this end is our bottle screw section, which I was explaining before is the bit that this bit in the middle here turns and that creates, allows you to draw the wire in to create the tension. The other end is what we just call a, a fork terminal area. Uh, just very quickly, these fork sections that you see here and here. They're obviously designed to go over some sort of eye bolt or, or eye screw uh, that would be going into your metal or, or timber post. So on this particular end section here, once again, it's exactly the same. You just unscrew this as far as you can go, then just push the wire in like so, and then same thing again, just start turning accordingly. Now, there's only so far you can turn with your fingers, you can't get the grip on it. So what would actually be a better option using a trusty spanner that I have here, is actually to slip the spanner over the end like so, and then literally you just start turning accordingly. And it's a little bit difficult because obviously what you'd have is you'd have this actually fixed in place. Same thing on this end, you literally just start twisting accordingly here so that you get it nicely screwed in place. And there you have it. That's your nice section of wire, nice and tense, nice and strong there. Might have been a little bit of slippage and that was really just because, as I said, you just need to be able to get some sort of tension. My issue is you'd want to be able to hold on here as you turn it. 
But what you've got here is as you twist this part, the drawers lock in place and hold the wire in place. It looks pretty good, doesn't it? Now it's a little bit bigger than the other fitting. If you have a look, a close up look here, you can see it's a little bit more bulbous looking. But as I said, the advantage is you don't need any special tool for this fitting, whereas you do need a special tool for that fitting there. But, and this is probably the thing you need to consider, there is a, there is a cost, cost factor involved in this. These fittings, because of the mechanisms and how they're made, are substantially more expensive. In fact, they're basically four times the price. So the cost of making this versus the cost of making that, you're looking at four times the cost. So clearly, you would only be doing this if you just had a few runs to do. Maybe, as I said, you had a bit of um, vines or something like that, you wanted to grow some garden vines, or maybe you just got a few sections of balustrades you want to do. This is where this particular setup would work best. But if you have any more than probably 10 runs that you're wanting to do, I would always recommend going down the hydraulic option. One, I think it looks a little bit better, but it's not quite as big. But more importantly, you're probably gonna save some money because by the time you buy the tool um, versus the, the difference in cost between the two, it, it, it's quite a big difference. Now, I hope you've learned something in today's video about swageless wire balustrade fittings. And if you like what you've seen, give me the like, hit the like button, I should say. And also don't forget to uh, leave a comment because I can always answer any of your questions you may have. And more importantly, please subscribe to our channel and uh, remember to tap the bell notification because that's the best way of keeping up to date with the various different videos we release. This is Wyatt Groth, signing off. Mm -hmm.